Today, we are going to be ranking every spec in the game for Cataclysm PvP, focusing exclusively on Season 9, where some specs will actually be at their best. And speaking of being at your best, having a good UI will definitely carry in this new classic expansion. Even if you played Kata back in the day or are a die-hard classic player, our brand new skill capped add-on will give you the best start in the early expansion. With the click of a button, we can level up your UI in a matter of seconds, giving you weak auras customized for every spec, improved buff and debuff tracking, pixel perfect unit frames, and so much more. Skill cap members will even get access to additional profiles, including one of the most revolutionary nameplate profiles that will increase your damage and awareness. Seriously, it's insanely OP. And to get the biggest advantage in the early season, we have hundreds of guides available right now on our website. Our courses teach you everything to master your damage, CC, utility, and more. Designed alongside the most dedicated Cataclysm players for over a decade. As always, our service is backed up by a rank up guarantee where we promise you will gain at least 400 rating while using our guides. So to get the rating you've always wanted, visit skillcap.com using the exclusive discount links below. Alright, first up we have our melee tier list starting with one of the weakest specs in Cataclysm. Frost DK teeters on the edge as a viable spec for PvP, being more of a gimmick than anything else, limited most by its own win condition. In an era where doing high sustained spread pressure could carry, having most of your power coming from one minute bursty setups is not that appealing in Arena, especially when you rely on someone else to stun for you. Of course, Frost DK Burst is still quite good in Cataclysm, but the spec has a weaker defensive kit overall compared to Unholy, so surviving in between goes can be an issue. So as a spec that is truly unremarkable but still somewhat viable, we're going to be putting Frost DK on the C tier. Most Death Knights will be playing Unholy, which is definitely a meta spec throughout Cataclysm. Unholy DK plays a very similar role compared to its debut in Wrath of the Lich King, having good sustained AoE pressure while also having strong sustained burst during Gargoyle. And now with the addition of Dark Transformation, Unholy has an exceptional amount of damage coming from their pets. Unholy DK is a great spec to pair with any high tier DPS who either has Immortal Strike effect or insane damage. As with the addition of Necrotic Strike and with a Stun and Blanket Silence effect, Unholy DKs can really snowball pressure, all while doing a great job at keeping enemy players snared. So because of its excellent pressure and control, Unholy DK will be the first spec going on the high tiers. Moving on, we have Feral Druid who is arguably the end boss of melee in Cataclysm. Feral saw multiple quality of life improvements going into Kata, specifically to its defensive kit and with the redesign of survival instincts and frenzied regeneration, the spec is quite durable, especially into other melee. Where Feral truly shines is in its ability to dictate pressure, as not only does the spec possess remarkable control thanks to instant cyclones, but bleed damage is ridiculously strong in Cataclysm, especially using buffs to snapshot dot damage. Since Cyclone is on its own unique DR in Kata, and since dot pressure is actually relevant compared to more modern expansions, Feral is one of the most diverse melee in the game, slotting into virtually any 3v3 comp. So as the melee spec that is arguably the best in Cataclysm, we're obviously putting Feral Druid on the S tier. Next up is Retribution Paladin, who is no joke, especially in Season 9. Rhett has by a long shot the most utility out of any DPS in the game, and in some ways plays a true support role in Cataclysm. The introduction of the Holy Power system brought with it the addition of Word of Glory, which as a Rhett Paladin will heal for 50% more when used on other friendly target. The selfless healer talent is quite literally the reason why triple DPS is so dominant throughout the entire expansion, since Rhett Paladins can do similar HPS to an actual healer in shorter games. Kata also adds a few new offensive cooldowns to pair with wings, making Rhett burst damage quite scary, especially in the early expansion. And although Rhett Paladin might fall off later on thanks to the rise of high tier casters, it will still be exceptionally strong and less PvE reliant compared to other classes in the early game. So as Cataclysm's main support spec, Rhett Paladin easily earns its spot on the high tiers. Just two minutes ago, we mentioned that Feral is the end boss of PvP, and if that's true, then Sub Rogue is the main character, whether you like it or not. There is a good reason why some of the most iconic Rogue players of all time widely regard Cataclysm as one of the best expansions. Rogue is arguably the strongest melee, competing only with Feral. The spec has everything you would want as a high tier melee. Fantastic sustained and burst damage, strong defensives, impeccable control, and above all else, rogues are cool. Seriously though, Sub Rogue is a complete package in Cataclysm with virtually no hard weaknesses. The addition of Smoke Bomb combined with the strength and control offered by Shadow Dance helps solidify Rogue as a true jack of all trades, where it is the backbone of many high tier comps like RMP, RLS, and Thug Cleave. So as one of Cataclysm's main characters, Sub Rogue is without a doubt an S tier melee. 
At this point, you might be wondering about the other rogue specs. While assassination and combat might have a strong showing in PvE, we wouldn't really recommend them for PvP. Between the two, assassination takes the lead, landing on the C tier, while combat falls all the way to D tier as one of the weakest melee DPS. Moving on, we have Enhancement Shaman, who might be a bit underrated in Kata. The spec manages to fill the niche of a caster bully thanks to a 5 second cooldown on Wind Shear, giving it enormous control in the early expansion, even when casters are disproportionately weaker. Enhance can also do a surprising amount of damage with Wolves, but is quite reliant on playing with a Mortal Strike spec to make its burst truly matter. And while Enhance is often a kill target in most matchups, it has a pretty well-rounded defensive kit thanks to a 1 minute cooldown on Wall, Stone Claw, Totem Shields, and of course, Instant Cast Heals. Overall though, Enhancement is definitely weaker than Rhett as a hybrid melee, and as a result, will be going a tier lower. Up next is Arms Warrior, who is another spec that will peak during the early expansion. What many people forget is that at the beginning of Kata, MS effects were all nerfed to 10%. But then during patch 4.3, which is pretty much the patch Classical will be played on, MS saw a pretty significant buff. Now of course this was a buff to rogues and hunters too, but they were already faring quite well in the late expansion meta, where high tier wizards were starting to dominate. Arms Warriors on the other hand fell off as the expansion progressed, but were at their strongest during the early expansion, where wizards weren't nearly that oppressive and where PvE gear wasn't as game defining. The utility offered by Arms Warrior will help them shine in Season 9, where melee cleaves will be more pervasive and you can expect warriors to do exceptionally well with comps like Kitty Cleave and KFC. Warriors won't be nearly as dominant as they were in Wrath of the Lich King, but you should expect them to be very competitive in Season 9. Because the spec is at its peak in Season 9, Arms will be going onto the A tier but will likely be a tier lower as the expansion progresses. Unfortunately, Fury isn't really cut out for PvP and will be joining Combat Rogue on the D tier. With every melee sorted, let's move on to ranged DPS, starting with a spec that might actually be underrated. Balanced Druid is truly a god of damage in Cataclysm. In fact, it's not rare to see Boomkins completely gapping other DPS on the meters. The interesting part is that virtually none of this damage needs to be hard casted, because Boomkins can do an absurd amount of damage with Dots alone, especially Moonfire, which they routinely spam to maintain Lunar Shower stacks. When Dots are rolling, Boomies get instant Star Surge procs, which can hit pretty hard, allowing the spec to not only build momentum, but pack a punch with some unpredictable bursts. Now, the main downside of Balanced Druid is the fact that it does get trained quite often. Unlike Feral, who has survival instincts and who takes more passive healing, Balanced Druids are pretty squishy, which often means needing to kite, especially during Season 9. So, in many ways, Balanced Druid is truly balanced, but is strong enough to be our first spec going on the A tier. Mark's Hunter is quite a controversial spec to rank in Cataclysm. If you've been watching our channel or have been keeping up with the news, the infamous pet dismissing tech that made Hunters a bane on private servers doesn't seem to work in the official release of Cataclassic. Now, if you were to ask Hunter mains, they might tell you how awful their class suddenly is. But even without the ability to infinitely reset Roar of Sacrifice and Monkey Blind, we still think Mark's Hunters are pretty damn good. With some of the best front-loaded bursts in the game and with one of the most oppressive CC chains for enemy healers, Hunters will definitely have a strong showing throughout the entire expansion, even at the cost of some utility loss. Without a doubt, there will be Hunters climbing to the top of the ladder in comps like Thug Cleave, Jungle, or even Triple DPS, as the raw burst damage in these comps will be a huge execution test for any healer in Season 9 and beyond. So despite some doom and gloom from Hunter mains, we still think they will be an S tier DPS. As for the other two Hunter specs, BM is definitely a runner up, but very far behind Marks, landing itself on the C tier. And despite its strength in BVE, Survival will actually be a tier lower, falling all the way to the D tier. Next up, we have our Mage specs, with Fire definitely being the strongest of the three. As you should know by now, Fire Mage has one of the scariest win conditions in the game through Combustion, which has the potential to rot through multiple health bars all at once, sometimes without the chance for counterplay. Fire also has a unique advantage over Frost when it comes to landing polymorphs. Unlike Deep Freeze, which will actually DR with Ring of Frost, Fire Mages actually have the ability to DB Sheep, which is quite strong in an expansion where actually landing CC is far more difficult. Another unique advantage of Fire is how much damage it can do on the move. Scorch can be used while casting, and with Living Bomb and Fire Blast both being instant, Fire suffers far more damage loss when needing to kite. And speaking of which, Fire Mobility is quite strong thanks to the combination of Blazing Speed and multiple roots. Without a doubt, Fire Mage is one of Kata's scariest casters and will obviously be going into the S tier. Frost is definitely strong all throughout Kata, but takes a back seat behind Fire as the premier mage spec. 
The main downside of Frost Mage is its reliance on hard casting, as dealing optimal burst damage does require those big shatters, often leading with Frostbolt. In the early expansion, landing casts can prove to be quite difficult with the absurdly low amount of haste being available on gear, and with a bunch of melee licking their lips to kick some casts. Because of this, Frost is a bit more comp restricted compared to Fire, and really needs to play with a DPS who can support their needs to free cast and burst during very small windows. Again, the spec is still very strong, but still a tier lower than Fire. Unfortunately, Arcane is just one of the weakest specs in the game, and is way too slow to be viable in Arena, which dooms it to the D tier. Shadow Priest is one of the most unique specs in the game, and definitely deserves its spot as a high tier caster. The spec plays a truly dynamic role in Cataclysm, sometimes leaning into AoE spread pressure, and other times finding small windows to microburst. The same can be said for its utility kit, where at moments, Shadow Priests fill an offensive support role with cross CC, and then other times they need to play defense, assisting their team with off heals, life grips, and mass dispel. Shadow is definitely the most complicated caster in Cataclysm, able to play multiple roles in any given arena, being a jack of all trades, but master of none. While the spec might have a slow start to the expansion, it will still fall on the A tier as a respectable high tier DPS. Unfortunately, Elemental Shaman is one spec that takes a considerable nosedive from Wrath to Cata. The loss of Astral Shift makes Ellie go from being an unstoppable force to a victim spec lacking any major defensive. Ellie Burst is still quite strong in Cataclysm, thanks to the addition of Unleash Weapon and Fulmination, which opens up a pretty big sequence of Burst when allowed to freely cast. Seriously, Ellie Burst is no joke. Again, the main problem is that Ellie will get trained into the ground most games, especially in Season 9, where melee DPS will reign supreme. So as a spec that has limited options, Ellie will be going into the B tier. On the flip side, Affliction Warlock is one of the MVPs in the Cata expansion, being one of the best and most consistent specs throughout each season. Affliction truly levels up going into Cata thanks to the addition of Soul Swap and Demon Soul, which together allows for a long cascade of spread pressure, and even can be used to snapshot powerful dots for a very long period of time. Even without OP PvE gear, Affliction Warlock damage will be very high in Season 9. As we mentioned earlier in this video, spread pressure is actually quite relevant in Cata, and Warlocks are in a tier of their own when it comes to the ability to rot enemy health bars. With the strongest dispel protection in the game, Affliction is a great partner for high tier melee and other casters. And as one of the tankiest specs in the game thanks to incredible passive defense, Warlock is a great addition to any comp. Because of this, Affliction Warlock is the final caster spec to reach the S tier. Unfortunately, neither Demo nor Destro can really compete in Arena, but there's still Warlocks at the end of the day with great control options, landing both specs on the C tier despite having mediocre damage. Now let's wrap things up with our healer rankings, starting with another fall from grace. Cataclysm might be Resto Druid's only bad expansion. The spec isn't awful, but the effort to reward ratio can make it very punishing to play. Resto is mostly limited by its healing output, which seems to be balanced more around PvE during this expansion, with Life Bloom being significantly weaker compared to other expansions. Kata is also when many DPS gain strong offensive cooldowns and more micro CC, which makes weaker healing output even more punishing and makes it much harder to recover from long CC chains. Finally, Druids are definitely one of the squishier healers and are very likely to be trained by rogues and double melee setups. Because of all this, Druids really need very specific comps in Kata, pairing with classes that can provide them with lots of heals and defensive support. All things considered, Resto Druid is a solid B tier healer throughout the expansion, but really requires a skilled player to do well. Next up is Holy Paladin, who will wind up being one of the strongest healers, especially during the early expansion. Holy Paladins are a wall of cooldowns in Cataclysm, ready to block attacks with one CD trade after another. The introduction of Holy Power and Word of Glory means having even more instant cast healing options, which helps offset the main weakness that Holy Paladin can be quite vulnerable to ranged interrupts in CC. Perhaps the most obvious advantage Holy Paladin has over other healers is the fact that it has better options for getting trained by melee having a 30 second cooldown on Divine Protection, which even has a sprint effect automatically tied in thanks to Speed of Light. So as one of the healers best equipped to deal with the Season 9 meta, Holy Paladin will be making it to the A tier. Next up is Disc Priest, who is another high tier healer you will see often in Cataclysm. As we've been mentioning on this channel, Disc is the most offensive healer throughout the expansion, having the most potential damage output and the best dispel for keeping teammates out of CC. We should also mention that Psychic Scream is actually really good in Kata, despite the prevalence of Resto Shamans who have a newly redesigned Tremor Totem to counter it. The 27 second cooldown on this AoE fear gives Priests a unique cross CC setup option, which can be used to turn it around on those Resto Shaman Overlords as they get locked down by RMP cross CC. The main downside Disc Priests will have, especially during the melee era of Season 9, is the fact that they can be trained quite easily, especially by DKs. But all things considered, Disc is definitely one of the better healers, and will be landing on the A tier. 
Despite the fact that Holy has a few strong instant cast healing options, we wouldn't recommend it for PvP, and we will be putting it on the C tier. Alright, you made it to the end, which means facing the true end boss of Cataclysm, Resto Shaman. Shaman is without a doubt the best healer in the expansion for PvP. It has some of the best instant cast healing options thanks to Earth Shield, Riptide, and Healing Stream Totem, even having a small heal baked into its spammable dispel. Shaman is also one of the biggest benefactors of the new Mastery stat, which increases healing done on lower HP targets. With Kata damage profiles being so spiky, this is without a doubt a unique advantage Shaman has over other healers, as it's less punished by sudden burst damage and has an easier time recovering from extended CC chains. On that note, Shaman has some of the best instant recovery options thanks to NS and the newly added Spirit Link Totem, whose only counter is poor positioning and a well-timed smoke bomb. Shaman is also indirectly an offensive support healer, not because of its damage, but the fact that its totems provide pretty big damage increases to their DPS, and the ability to spam purge, interrupt, and ground incoming CC means shamans can carry a lot of momentum. So as the best healer in the game by a wide margin, Resto Shaman will be making its way to the S tier. Before we wrap up, you really don't want to miss this opportunity to get a massive head start on the competition with our rating gain guarantee. Our courses and arena commentaries have everything you need to help you reach your goals, regardless of what class you decide to main, we've got you covered. And with a brand new UI package designed specifically for Cataclysm, our website is the number one stop for players wanting to climb. One subscription gets you access to all of our games, allowing you to stay ahead of the competition no matter what expansion you play. Get the rating you've always wanted by visiting the exclusive discount link below. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this one. We want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.